today, I'm talking about volume mixers. I'll be showing you this device that I've been using for the past six months in my streams and why I think it's such a good value and why I think you need one. Now, before I get into the review, I will disclose that I have worked with PC Panel in the past on paid projects. This was for video, photo, design, and advertising. However, they are not paying me to make this review, and they do not get to review this video before I post it. They have sent me this review unit, which I will be sending back at the end of the review. However, I've been using my own unit for about six months now in my streams, and I'll be giving my thoughts on this as well. I'll start off with an unboxing. I could really care less about the box that this product comes in. Inside, we have a card and the PC panel itself. The card gives us a download link where we can get the software for our PC panel. And inside is the device itself. The USB Type-A cable comes tied up and is neatly packed away in the box. The front of the device has four metal knobs as well as a nicely printed graphic to show your volume levels. As it's advertised on its website, it comes as a solid block of wood only with the back door screwed on. This brings me to the first thing that I'm not a fan of. The back door has four protruding screws and a very obvious line of where it's connected. This isn't the biggest deal since it'll be facing away from you on your desk. However, I would like to see flush integration and better hidden screws in a new version, especially for $60. On the back, we can take out the four screws to take off the back panel. Here we can see that the USB cable is just a mini USB plugged into the PC panel circuit board. So if we wanted to, we can replace this cable later for one that's longer or shorter. You can rotate the four knobs on the front. So they work as volume control and they also push in as buttons, which are programmable. Now I'll show you what the device can really do once we get it set up on our computer. So I have the PC panel plugged into my computer. To install the software, you can just download and install it from the website. It's very straightforward. And after you finish installing it, I recommend that you restart your computer to make sure everything's absolutely working correctly. Now jumping into the software, you can see the first problem that we run into. By default, the PC panel needs you to select a COM port. By default, it is nothing, and you have to select COM and then whatever number comes after it. This is a minor hassle. Um, if you're on a desktop, you only have to set it up once, but if you move around with a laptop and have to plug in and unplug PC panel multiple times, then this can become a pain. Now that we have our COM port selected, you can see as I move around the knobs, they move around in real time. And then when I press them in, you can see that working as well. To configure our knobs, all we have to do is double click on the knob we want to configure. And then we can see all the options PC panel gives us. I'll start by configuring the dial. The options is pretty straightforward. First, we have app volume. So here we can set an app that we want. Here I have Chrome.exe. So if I bring up the volume mixer, you can see whenever I turn the knob, it moves Chrome.exe up and down very easily. Next, we have App Focus. So I have this set up on my third knob. What this does is any app you have selected, it can change that volume. So here, since I have Chrome selected, I can turn my knob three and it will adjust Chrome accordingly. So showing over Spotify, it's my actual program. So now that's being changed by volume three. This is so useful. If you're playing a game and you want to change the volume of that game, you don't have to program in that game specifically. Since it is the active program, all you have to do is turn that knob and it'll change the game every single time. Moving on to the last option under the dial, we have device volume. This is just your overall volume. If I set it, boom, now it changes the volume overall. This is useful if you don't want to use your keyboard to change volume. I prefer to just use my keyboard and my headset so I'll leave that set to focus volume. Now this is where I have an issue with the volume app selection method. Here you can see I have discord.exe that was pretty easy to set up, but below it I have ts 3 client underscore win64.exe. That's a mouthful and it's not as intuitive to set it up when you have to type in an exe like that. This is for a program I use called TeamSpeak. If I open that up, you can see in task manager, the program is just called TeamSpeak3 client. So what do you type in TeamSpeak3 client? No, you have to go right click on that program, you click properties, and then this is the exe name that you have to put into PC panel. I understand why they do this. It makes it very clear of the specific program that you want to change the volume of. However, I don't think this is very user friendly, and I think this could use an update. Moving on to the button section, we can program in so many options into the buttons of the PC panel. To start off, you can put a keystroke in if I wanted it to press, I don't know. Control S, 
I can have it press control S whenever I hit that button. That works fine. Here I can say whenever I press knob two, I want it to launch Blender. So press knob two, boom. You can launch any program you want. That's incredibly useful. Next up, we have music control, all the basic music control features, pause, play, forward, back, stop, mute. I have it set up on my three and four knobs for forward and backwards. Next, we have end program. So let's say you want to close the program, Spotify.exe. Again, you have to type in the exe. Boom, I can press knob two. Spotify is now closed. Up next, we have sound device. This is a repetitive feature. We have sound device. So if I wanted to switch from one microphone to another, um, I could program two knobs, one for each sound device, but they added in a new feature called toggle sound device, which I think is way more useful. Here we can drag our microphones into the selected devices. So I have my Rode mic, which is the one I'm using here, and I can bring in the headset microphone, which is the one I use right here. So I can switch between these two devices on the fly all with one press from my PC panel. Now to show this to you, switches in control panel live. You can see I hit the button, goes from headset microphone to the Rode microphone instantly. Now there's one caveat to this. When you are setting up for the first time, you might have a bunch of microphones named microphone. So here, I set it back up to how it was by default. All my microphones were called microphone. And in this little text underneath, it says G430, G5, 33, whatever. So when everything is called microphone, PC panel is not able to differentiate it. So it just shows up as microphone and then you don't have the option to switch between them. So what you have to do is you have to be in control panel. You have to rename each microphone. So I know this one is the Rode microphone. So I have to type that in and apply. And then you have to type it in for my headset and hit apply. Once I restart the program and go back to the option menu, it will show up headset microphone and then road microphone. I've also done the same thing for my speakers. By default, everything was called speakers. So I have my headphones and I have speakers that I like to listen to music on. So I've set them up headset and speakers and I can switch between those using my PC panel as well. So once it's all set up for you, all you have to do is click this little X and then the PC panel software will automatically run in the background and when your computer starts. So all I have to do is turn the knobs and it will just everything exactly how you have it set up. So to finish off my review, I think PC panel is a very reliable device once you have it set up correctly. The build quality is very solid and it really allows you to mix your volume on a budget. Compared to something more expensive like a Go XLR or a Stream Deck, a PC panel is only $60, which is why I think it's absolutely worth it for streaming and gaming especially when you're just getting started. What I'd really like to see in newer versions is different styles of PC panel. I like the wood finish, but I know for a lot of people, it's a big turnoff for them. They like something sleeker that would match their desk setups. And I'd also like to see either some LCD display built in or maybe RGB so you can identify each knob in the dark a little bit better. The last thing I'd like to see is to make the software more user-friendly. You see how I had to rename some of my microphones and headphones to get it to work and I type in .exe and look up program names to get those to work as well. With some small improvements, I think that this is an absolute amazing product. So if you'd like to pick one up for a discount, I have an affiliate code in the description that also supports my channel. With that being said, that concludes my review of PC Panel. If you want links for music and other stuff, that would be in the description below, and I'll see you in the next one.